G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. The world is hopefully starting to open up soon, Busher, and the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped is here to help you get ready. Inside the Performance Package, you'll find the Lawn Bomber 4.0 Trimmer, you'll find the Weird Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, like below, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Ball Toner. I can whip those out if you'd like. Also the product. I was gonna say, what are we talking about there? <laughs> this is your pathway to two luscious balls. Plus you'll get two free gifts, the performance box of briefs and the shed travel bag. It's a nice little purse for your missus to put your balls in later. As we hopefully enter this post quarantine world, this package is the perfect package for your package and peak performance in whatever sport you desire, even pool. <laughs> the brand new Lawn Mower 4.0 is here to take the podium. This fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to the advanced skin safe technology. You're a grooming accident. <laughs> hey. Bush, the 4.0 Lawn Mower has a 7000 RPM motor, a new multi-function on-off switch that the 3.0 didn't have. It has a travel lock, and it gives you the ability to turn on the LED spotlight, which is different to the 3.0. Apparently it's a 4K LED spotlight. Mmm, full resolution on those nuts. Oh yeah, that's what you need. Did I also mention this trimmer is waterproof, so you can, you know, go to town in the shower. I mean shaving, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the package also comes with the weed whacker to chop your worst weeds up in both your nose and your ear, which is an underrated consideration. The weed whacker is also waterproof and uses an over 9,000 RPM, actually sorry, it's exactly 9,000 RPM, moded 360 degree rotary dual blade system. The nose and ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin safe technology, which helps nicks, snags and tugs in those delicate holes. Wow, that was quite a mouthful. Enough about your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Remember guys, through True Footy, you can head to the website manscaped.com and you can get 20% off and free shipping these elite products if you simply use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word, at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping, which is a lovely deal. Let's get into the podcast. Fitzy, you said you'd use that code the other day, so you better bloody use that code, you cheap bastard. All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to yet another True Footy podcast with a highly sought after guest. I did fear we might not get a trade period or um, or a draft on in with Lenny because he's no longer living in Perth. But welcome back, mate. It's great to have you. Thanks for having me again. Um, I'm not going to lie. I've been having some separation anxiety from this <laughs> studio, so I'm glad to be back. <laughs> some of the subscribers and viewers and listeners of the podcast as well um, were very grateful for your input. So today we're just going to rattle through um, some of the trade stuff. I've been making uh, trade video videos outside out of my wazoo so to speak um at the moment but it is good to have you here as well for some insight uh and also talk about the draft because that's yep. your forte um in particular the wa kids and stuff like that um but other than that how have you been yeah i've been good mate um for those who don't know i'm actually living up in port headland at the moment mm. working at the high school there doing their marketing for them and yeah, it's been a good little four or five months since I've been up there, but glad to be in this studio again. Yeah. So yeah, go to Port Headland High School, kids. <laughs> yes, travel that far. <laughs> just, to, just to see lady. Yep. Cool. Um, all right, so yeah, how we split it is the first half we're going to talk about the trade period. The second half we're going to talk about some draft stuff. Um, so I guess we'll open up. Uh, this is going to be heavily guided by questions. So I did put up an Instagram story uh, getting like last night while yep. I was out getting turned <laughs> with the Dockers boys after the doggy. Yeah, yeah. So a few Dockers. I boys also after. shared that story whilst also having a couple of refreshing beverages. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was merry with wine. Let's say that we've got the fourth guest as well is um, Ted Busher, who is Bush's rambunctious dog. I don't know if they, they've never seen the dog on this. I don't like, think they've seen him in person. I've heard him a lot. He's he's about as big and hairy as Busher. Yeah, pretty much. But we might we have it. to demonstrate the lawnmower 4.0 on him sometime. But just shave his nuts. He doesn't have those. <laughs> so we have to just shave the rest of him. Fair enough. Let's get back into the trade stuff. <laughs> um, cool. So we got a question here from Jaden to open up the chat. In terms of the trade period, uh, who do we feel is the best talent up for grabs? I don't know about you guys. I kind of feel like there's a lack of big headline yeah. trades this year. Like mm. we in 2019, we had Tim Kelly, and then in 2020, we had uh, oh, Cameron. Jeremy Cameron would have been the biggest name last year. Yeah. Uh, do we agree that for 2020, it's almost Adam Chera? Sort yeah. of. The narratives seem to have pushed it that way. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, how do you see it, Lenny? Yeah, I think Chera's probably leading. It, it'll actually be interesting to see the Collingwood sit situation in front of the pre Asians, so the guys who. Uh, join free agency or become free agents next year get traded out this year so that's more to go yeah yeah like yeah. your to go your darcy moore and the yeah. other one's Braden maynard i think true so maybe 
if Des suddenly starts to get a bit more talk about those guys, that's that could change. But at the moment, I think it's just Chera. Yeah, uh, Jordan Dawson's probably up there in terms of quality. Yeah. I feel like Chera's got the like, highest ceiling because yeah. uh, he obviously hasn't like made his mark fully on the yeah. AFL just yet. But um, yeah, Jordan Dawson's another yeah. quality player. But other than that, it's... Do uh, we assume Neil's sailed into the sunset at this point? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. We can't assume anything, but probably. Lean towards probably. it, I would too, yeah. The thing we need to remember as well is with the trade period, like last year we didn't know Trelaw was even a chance to move until the yeah. trade period started, I think. Yeah. Um, there's been a few deals late. I think Cornelio's another rumour that won't yeah. quite go away, even though he's got yeah. a five-year deal. Yeah. So I, I almost bet that it won't be Adam Chera, but at the moment it is. Yeah. On that note, you boys are freer boys, and yeah. I'm sure there's uh, there's a few people that want to free me out of perspective. Yeah. What do you? Um, I'll start with you, Bush. Yeah. What, what are your expectations for a deal for Chera? Well, now that he's nominated Carlton, baselines pick six and something else decent. Not like another first necessarily, even though that's probably what I'd ask. But if I had to settle for a second, be fair cop. So a first, a pick six, and a like maybe a future second or twenty six. I'd think try and push for their one they've got this year, but they'd probably try and settle for a future, which is you'd kind of get it from their end. So you got to give and take in these things. Fair enough. How about yourself, Lenny? Um, I would have like Bush. I would have said would have loved pick six. I originally thought maybe they could have done a stro- straight swap for Petrovsky Seaton, but he's really? now nominated West Coast, I believe. So. Would you do a straight swap for Chera and Petrovsky Seaton? Oh. Well, they're two midfielders. They're both silky. They're classy. The value of them, though, on the market so different, though, I feel mm. like. Yeah. I, it probably just depends because, like, in a way, like, because I've obviously worked with the kids before, you, it can be hit and miss the draft. Whereas yeah, that's because. Right. And I think Freo's development right now, the way they develop the young players like Brayshaw, Chera, Sarong, it seems better than Carlton where, you know, Paddy Dow hasn't quite come on, Lockie O'Brien hasn't mm. quite come on. SPS has been sort of been thrown all over the park. So I thought maybe if he came to Freo, he might be better off, but because he's chosen West Coast, I believe. Mm. Well, I'm hoping we get a lot less than what uh, than what that would cost for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're saying, would you be happy with pick six on its own? Yeah, I mean, you, I think you, we you'd need like, more. You'd like something a bit more, but if it ca- got to the last day of the trade and Carlton just weren't budging, you'd take it. But begrudgingly. But the thing yeah. is, though, we invested a pick five in him, and he's yeah. what. Sometimes I hit, sometimes I miss. This one's actually hit. We've put the good years of development into him. Now he's ready to hit that prime. Yeah. We need to see something for that investment, other yeah. than break even. Yeah. I've made this point before, but my belief is that Fremantle have done very, very well with the contracted players they've lost. So they got a good deal for Neil. They got a very good deal for Lockie Weller. Um, was Ed Langdon out of contract? I think he was. Yeah. yeah. Because you didn't get a great deal for Langdon. Yeah, that was probably the worst. And the difference is because he's not contracted and that's going to apply here to Chera as well. Yeah. So I'm starting to think that pick six for Chera is going to get the deal done now, yeah. to be honest. Thing is though, North Melbourne and Hawthorne both sit in their pre-season draft. They... If the falls from him in the pre-season draft, they're taking him. They have nothing better to spend their salary cap on. So that is true, but then you have to look at from the Fremantle perspective. They're, they're they saying don't get anything. They don't get anything out of that. So I don't know if it's realistic that Fremantle mm, would let yeah. that happen. But Carlton don't want to make the promises to this guy and then not get it done either. Yeah. That's the key yeah. point. It doesn't happen too often. It's pretty. Uh, it, like I think it happened to Jackson Hately. Uh, where he went into the PSD. But Happened with Jack Martin. That's how Carlton got him through the door. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So That is the probably the, the biggest shining example of that. But I. But don't. the difference there is Jack Martin wasn't going to go to other Victorian teams, whereas Chara just wants to go home. Yeah, yeah. I, I would and still... he doesn't want to fuck Freo over either. That's the other factor. Chara's trying mm. to find us the best deal he can. Yeah, but then you could argue as well that like Fremantle kind of owe it to Cherry in that sense as well because yeah. they that to accept a deal to make it to facilitate the trade so they're fucking him over as much as anything in mm-hmm. that situation but anyway we got your positions yeah. you'd be happy with pick six you want a little bit more I understand both uh, sides of that but I think I think pick six gets it done to be honest yeah. I know you won't like that <laughs> it's gonna take more yeah, but, I mean, you look at uh, Ed Langdon. I think you got a pick upgrade from twenty six to twenty two in a future second or something like that. It's not even. that. Wasn't it just a future second, basically? No, you did upgrade your second, I think, uh, and then you traded it back away mm. to I think to Melbourne. But anyway, um, so we'll we'll park the Fremantle chat for a bit. But they, they are typically active in this trade period, so they will come up again. Uh, but we do have a question from Ashton Hurd, uh, and this one's a little left field, and I don't know if we can answer it, but. How do both Sydney teams cope with players wanting to leave because of COVID? 
I think now the dynamics shifted because in the past it was probably you were given this great opportunity, like, you know, appreciate it. Whereas now, like, in Cher's case, like, he hasn't seen his family in two years. Mm. Like, you, it's... And ever since I moved up to Port Edland, I've now realised why those guys do want to go home because, like, you know, if you haven't seen family in two years or mm. all that, and also with the way Sydney is at the moment, like, it just almost looks never-ending, so... Um, and clubs are now better with it, I think, mm. in understanding that guys do need to prioritise their families over um, their careers. So That's true. I do wonder if it's a factor here with Jordan Dawson, uh, who was originally talked about leaving because of salary cap issues, but then reportedly got a pretty good deal from Sydney and has yeah. obviously requested a trade home anyway. I've no idea why, uh, but I'm speculating COVID could be a factor because yeah. you have the choice of you know going to Adelaide for a decent contract or you could go back to a fully locked down New South Wales or yeah. or whatever and especially with that government in New South Wales at the moment they I wouldn't want to deal with them to be honest with you if I was the average citizen in New South Wales I don't know if there is a simple answer to this because Sydney can't control and when I say Sydney I mean the Sydney teams can't control COVID so yeah. I don't know if there is a way to cope with it yeah. I do think as well even an example like Petrevsky Seaton we've talked about He's moving home because he wants to be closer to family, but, I mean, he's from Halls Creek, which yeah. is almost as far from Melbourne as it is from I Perth. thought he was moving because Carlton wouldn't play him in a consistent position and he'd crack the shit. That's another possibility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but another factor in that is that there's a border that you're mm. getting past. So if, yeah. once you're in WA, it's a lot easier to go home if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, so it's even we, we might even be seeing it happen here with Melbourne teams. Um, could we kill that dog? <laughs> Keeping on with the uh, the city trend, we got a question from Daniel Saunders, who has a... Well, it's not a question. It's more of a what are thoughts on this three-way trade suggestion. So he's a Sydney fan. He says, uh, in this hypothetical, Sydney get pick 13 from GWS um, in the Dawson deal. So 13 yeah. for Dawson. Uh, and they get a pick 23 and a future second from Adelaide. Um, so it's kind of a question of, is 23 and a future second add up to 13? Yeah. Uh, and then Adelaide get jo- Jordan Dawson. So, do that all make sense? Is that yeah. easy to consume? Okay, so what do we think about that? Seems a little convoluted to get the deal done, really, but <laughs> unless there's specific reasons why they don't want the high pick or... So, it's um, Adelaide don't want to trade pick four for Dawson, and their next oh, pick is 23, yeah. which is a little bit o- uh, unders, rather. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, you're yeah. looking at a mid-team pick, so it's all about the, the, the quest for to get a t- yeah. pick in the teens. Um, my personal take on it is that 23 in a future second is probably not tempting enough for GWS to move down from 13. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Because, yeah. because they're, they're, yeah, I mean, it probably... Still, isn't the thing with this draft that it's pretty even from like about five to like 20 or whatever? That's true. Well, I suppose, Lenny, you're yeah. the man. Do you yeah, agree with that? it seems to be a shallower draft. Shallower. Okay, yeah, interesting. In previous years, but then again, you never really know for draft. Like, I remember Especially at the time... The I remember at the time people were saying 2014 was shallow compared to 2013. Mm. And then you look at that 2014 class, you got Petrarca, Brayshaw, Dugowie, all Andrews. those guys just yeah. dominating. So who knows? We, there might be a few future superstars from this draft. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I guess from... Uh, yeah, you're right. So maybe maybe they would be willing to trade down to get that extra, extra second. I, I feel like GWS probably want to favour quality there. I think, I think it adds up on value. It's more, I'm just saying, I don't know if GWS is getting enough out of that for them to want to help yeah. Sydney. Um, yeah. It'd be yeah. how they value the draft would be the big factor. That's very like, true. Obviously, because yeah. different clubs value yeah. different kids differently. That's very yeah. true. Uh, we'll move on to another free man of question. Uh, so there's a couple here regarding Jordan Clark moving from Geelong to the Dockers. Yeah. Uh, Darcy Tucker's a player that's popped up a little bit in yeah. uh, recent days because he hasn't been signed up. Um, yeah. There's a lot of players unsigned in the league. This bloke, K Taylor Six, uh, suggests Tucker and a third rounder for Jordan Clark. Is that possible? Um, on both sides of it, how do you think that would work? Like, would Geelong like if that? I'm, if I was Fremantle first, my first deal would be pick 27, I think we've got. Yep. Mm. I'd say that, the first one. And then if they wanted a little bit more, you could just say, okay, you can have Darcy Tucker and a third rounder. And I think that would get it done. Mm. Um, because essentially, Fremantle would be getting another. Oh, outside player in Clark and another draft pick which could help them with the Jesse Motlop situation being yeah. an NGA player but um, I think it, overall it works well it just depends if Geelong rate Tucker highly they've been reportedly interested what do you think about this I'd prefer the Tucker and a third sort of deal because like, mm. 27 feels like realistically it's what you've got to pay and I understand that but 
I'd kind of like to keep it and assault the draft as hard as we can this year because there's mm. a lot of great WA kids. So you'd rather miss out or forego on Jordan Clark? I could do the wait a year thing, but it sounds like it yeah. could be a possibility on him. I could wait a year and try and use this as our last chance to assault the draft hard and then start compromising the draft for these sort of deals next yeah. year, I think. Yeah, we'll just shout out to Clarky95 who also asked what are your general thoughts on Freo giving up pick 27 to Clark. I think j- the Cats have come out and asked for a late teens, early 20s. So yeah. from their perspective, 27 on its own is actually up. Yeah, that's posturing for 27, really. They're, yeah, they're saying that to get 27, really. But he is contracted as well. And Geelong, uh, as I know as an Eagles fan in recent years, are not that easy to deal with yeah. in the trade table. So I, I actually, I've said this before, I'm inclined to, to wait a year. Would yeah. you, yeah, would yeah, you think know. that's uh, a good about it? Yeah. Um, we got a West Coast question next. What is the plan for West Coast? Asks Niasha. Um, to, to give a general summary on it, we have peaks t- uh, 10, which will become 12, and then one in like 27-ish. I think it's just changed because there's been yeah. compensation picks. And then I think 35. Yeah, something that's something. Because like I saw a deal where we got the 35, you got your SPS and Carlton got mm. Chera or some shit like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get onto SPS shortly. That's the next question. But uh, in terms of the West Coast recruits, Petrovsky Seaton uh, probably going to happen. We've also been linked to a ruckman called Jordan Sweet from the yeah. Western Bulldogs. Um, the Bulldogs themselves need rucks, so it'd be that, strange if yeah. we prized him from there. Uh, but it's good to know we have some sort of ruck plan. Other than that, I think it's going to be pretty low key. I yeah. think. I, I think it's just about hitting the draft. Um, yeah. Whether we try and improve our draft position, probably. Yeah. Uh, but I think it'll be pretty low key for West Coast. Declan Keady asks, is Sam Petrevsky seaton worth a second rounder? L- Lenny, I think I know what you're going to say based on the previous yeah. conversation in this. <laughs> yeah. um, what are your thoughts on Petrevsky seaton as a watcher of WA yeah. footy? You yeah. probably remember when he got drafted at pick yeah. six. So. I think if he plays permanently in the midfield, he can become a genuine gun in the competition. Mm. Um, in some of the games he had in his first year when he was playing purely as an inside mid, he was dominating. Um I just think Carlton sort of stuffed him around a bit by t- telling him to play half forward, then half back, mm-hmm. midfield, wing. And Carlton have typically done that in the past. Like I remember a couple of years ago, like um, Jacob Breedering was playing at full forward or centre half forward. Right, yeah. And it's like he almost wins all Australian at centre half back. Like, mm. So, look, I think if he's in the right environment and he's getting developed correctly, yeah, he can become a very good player. What were your thoughts on him? I think he'd be a great like sort of pick up for a more stable team like West Coast. Obviously, like mm. Lenny said, it, it's definitely right. Carlton have thrown him all over the place. Like yeah. you're not going to get consistency in a young kid trying to figure out his game. Yeah. I love the optimism because I'm obviously an Eagles fan. I don't know. It, this might come across just because I'm, but, you know, my, but for the in terms of his value, sorry, it was like yeah, for, yeah. In terms okay. of being worth a second rounder, in the terms of the market, like I think Carlton have destroyed his market value for them yeah. too much. Mm. Yeah. Like, I don't think, like, in the market, he's probably worth... Like, he'd probably be worth the 30, picking the 30, he's not probably the one in the 20s. a second rounder purely because clubs, or some clubs, would see the upside yeah. he mm. can have. Yeah, that's, that's all very good points. I, I know I'm emotionally invested I, in this. I also sort of rank picks a little different, like, because people say first round or second round. Like, realistically, that's how it works, but I kind of do it, like, top 10, top 20, top 30. That's sort of how I sort yeah. of... Yeah. Like, he's worth one in the 30s, not necessarily the 20s is sort of, like, how I... So, because the thirty yeah. sort of is sort of sec- late second round, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. I was yeah. just saying, I, I am emotionally invested in this, but I honestly don't even think he's worth pick thirty six in terms of. You've got a guy who is talented, yeah, but I think if you've played ninety five games, you can't really rely on the the promise he showed when yeah. he was eighteen. I think he's get a little bit too removed from that. At the end of the day, I know he was played out of position. But if you're playing this bloke on a halfback flank when your team lacks midfielders, and then he doesn't. That, like it was in and out of that Carlton side. I think he played like fourteen games. Yeah. I think I think second round is steep to ask for, and it's yeah. the same with Jared Brander because yeah. I think we can make the same arguments about his talent. He was a first rounder just four years ago. Yeah, we could say, oh, he's played out of position, untapped potential. But at the end of the day, they're both out of contract. I think they're both worth peanuts. So that's yeah. my optimistic mm-hmm. view. That being said, that's not to underrate that he has a lot of upside and yeah. hopefully we can play him in position. Do you have any doubts, Lenny? Uh, maybe I've wondered, he plays like a sort of not quick inside mid. Do you think he's big enough physically to do that Petrus- at AFL level? Petrovsky season we're yeah. talking about? Yes, yes. Um, it's sort of hard because like like Caleb Sarong, for instance, is only one 78 centimetres mm. and can dominate. Um, yeah, it's true. But I think, I think it's just like, especially... Eh, Typically amongst the Indigenous boys, it's when they're really confident. Like you look at Shane Bolton for Richmond, like mm. he's 
got that much confidence in his game. He can just take anyone on. Him and SPS are similar sizes, I think. So probably, yeah. I think once you get the confidence in Petrovsky season, I think you'll we'll be talking about him in a much different way than what we are at the moment. I, yeah, hope, I think that I is right. a very big point with the indigenous midfielders. Like some of the great indigenous midfielders are real slight body, not that big sort of mm. guys. But like when they're Marlon. confident and up and about, like got that conviction in themselves. Like, like Marlon Pickett's which, not exactly a big guy, but like mm. you know, he's just got the confidence. We'll move on to some Essendon talk. Uh, we got a question from Aiden. Um, and he says, "What should Essendon do to avoid doing what the Saints did in 2020?" Uh, so, just for context, I think he's referring to when a young side, uh, maybe surprisingly in some eyes, made the finals. Yeah. How do they stop that drop back down the ladder, like St Kilda suffered? Um, do you have any take on that? I think the difference is St Kilda's brought a lot of players in, and yeah. so they're probably still trying to all gel. Whereas mm. Essendon's, like, yeah, I know Nick Hind wasn't in, mm. but um, other than that. I know you guys might tell me some other players, but it's not really like they've done St Kilda and brought in like five different players from other yeah. clubs. Like they're, they're still all organic. I was going to say, I think that they have brought in players, but a lot of them are kids. You yeah. know, your Nick Coxes, your Archie Perkins a bit. Yeah. So they're probably not... Oh, sorry, I should uh, rephrase. Like they've brought in... A, St Kilda's brought in a lot of established yes, players who yeah. would probably be used to the way their own clubs play. Mm. This is what we did when I was at that club. So they're, they're probably still doing that, gelling that chemistry needing, but... Whereas Essendon's probably got the organic growth, mm. I think. Um, I mean, they've probably still got a couple of holes they need to um, fix up. Like, I still think they lack a big-bodied inside mid. Like, yep. I still think Stringer's your better centre-half or forward, forward that goes into the midfield. Yeah. Um, and probably they just need another key defender, especially with Hurley and Hooker. We mm. just don't know of either of them. But True. Hooker playing forward mainly as well these yeah. days. So um, I think just with Essendon, it's just probably more just keep getting games into the kids and then that'll lead them to sustained success. Yeah. The other, the other downside of that is like, um, and I think it's going to be a very competitive top eight next year, but yeah. the obvious risk is that is when you rely on kids, then they are up and down because yeah. the kids. Yeah. So you could see Essendon drop off, but it wouldn't be concerning as such, I think. No. Um, I'm not saying it's going to happen either. Uh, is Essendon going to trade up the draft? Asks Essendon forever. Um, I have done a little research on this. So, um, They've gotten Jake Kelly in, uh, but through free agency. So it didn't cost them a pick. They currently hold 11, 37, and 48. And I believe what I read this morning, uh, actually there's a quote here from Josh Marnie who said, pick 11 is a great position to be in, but we really want to strengthen the two uh, third round picks at the moment. So yeah. what I think they're saying is, uh, well, in fact, it's a quote, we're open to opportunities. And if it has to involve future draft picks, we'd look at that as well. We think uh, there's a good group of players we'd like to get our hands on in this year's draft, especially in the second round. So I guess he's rating the top 35 or so. Um, so I think to answer that question, yes, they will. Um, it'd be interesting to see how they go about it because they have been linked to Ben Long from yeah. St. Kilda and Luke Dunstan from St. Kilda as well. Yeah. Um, I could also see them... Like Luke Dunstan kind of is that big bodied mid that you yeah. alluded to. So I do think it would be a good pickup for them. Yeah. And um, it'd be cheap because St. Kilda don't really want him. Exactly, yeah. I mean, there's talk about Dunstan ending up at Gold Coast as a rookie yeah. because they can't afford him. Yeah. Um, they're trying to, I think they're offloading Darcy McPherson to yeah. North, yeah. is what yeah. it was reported yeah. uh, to, to save a bit of cash. But another uh, option for Essendon is maybe Sire. Probably yeah. not that same kind of player, but for a team to try to a cheaper option. Exactly. He's the big bodied. Can't seem to get games at Collingwood when I thought they might need that ball in the middle. Yeah, field, but wouldn't necessarily say cheaper than Dunstan by the sounds. They both probably sell a dweller, good bargain deal. Size played a lot less footy, but yeah. you're right. I guess well, if, if Dunstan, Dunstan goes for free, Dunstan then Dunstan yeah. holds something like 13, 14 votes. Yeah, no, yeah. which was like second at St Kilda, and, and he only days. played half the games. He only played like eleven games or something. Yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, but I understand why, with, when you look at St Kilda's list, the the glut of inside yeah, mids that they've got. They've got Zach Jones. They've just brought in Crouch. Yep. Steel. Steel. They're, they're not going to kick him Bytel's out. Bytel's so. around there yeah. somewhere. Hunter Clark. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, the, you can see why Luke, uh, Luke Dunson's on the outer there. Yeah. Um, so it could be a good value pickup for Essendon. But yeah, long story short, uh, I think we, they could consolidate their list by bringing in some of these types, but also yeah. they're probably going to trade up the draft to answer the question. Yeah. Ash Nurens has a question about Pendlebury's contract situation. Um, Tom Morris reported two weeks ago that he will get a two-year deal, yep. and it hasn't happened yet. Yep. Um, I don't know how much there is to say about this. I would probably just suggest there's so many contracted, uncontracted players right now, and I think it's a squeeze of salary at the moment, and yeah. I think they're just waiting to see what deals happen, yeah. and yeah. they're going to spend every single dollar, so I'm not too concerned about that. No. 
Aiden Brown, supposedly Lockie Weller is unhappy at Gold Coast. Have you seen this? No, I, I've, I, I think I Bush might have um, slid into the DMs it. and given me a little tease about it. Oh, so. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Lockie Weller. I was DMs. in the group chat where I said, which Lockie from Queensland is more likely to end up at Freo? Oh, the answer yes. may surprise you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, which Queensland-based Lockie? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like The only thing I've seen about it is that Instagram post yeah. that was completely unsupported by anything mm. and I couldn't find a single yeah, news article a bit about dubious, it. Yeah. So I don't know how much we can add about that. Uh, I, the question also asks where do you think he may end up? Well, because he's from there, isn't he? He's Tassie, Queenslander. He's like both. So yeah, he'd be pretty open to wherever like mm. depending who offered the money and opportunity. Where I could see Freo needing a winger going, yeah, we'll bring him back. It just depends if he's already burnt his bridge at Freo like with the way he demanded out. Yeah, mm. that's true. Um, but I guess probably. we've had a bit of turnover staff and coaching yeah. and stuff since that time. So mm. yeah. It would just be a weird backflip but I know this is ironic because Lockie Neal's just done the same thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it would be a strange backflip to, to go back to Perth. Yeah. I could see him ending up at Victoria. I could see him ending up at the Lions. Yeah. Because mm. they, they've taken Archie, turn him into a good role play for him. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if they take Weller as well. They took yeah. Zorko as well back in the day. Uh, after he's cost them pick two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Freo trading back or some other to take him for peanuts. <laughs> yeah. That, Might be peanuts, but. Yeah. Zach Baruas. I'm probably not saying that right. Sorry, mate. It's a guy from Footy A to Z, so shout out Footy A to Z. Uh, good friend of the channel. Um, he says, what the fuck are Richmond going to do with all their picks? <laughs> um, so to clarify, Richmond have picks 7, 15, 26, 28, 40, and 44. So that's six picks in the first three rounds. Yeah. Um, Lenny, if you were Richmond, what do you, what do you think they should do? You can you can go into specifics around draft or you could just be speak generally. Um, what would you do? Oh, look, I think they'll, they'll try and get some more youth into the team. Um, just because, you know, they've probably got a few guys that are in their late 20s, early 30s. Um they might do some trades, maybe just have a look to see. I mean, I know they just added Robbie Tarrant, mm-hmm. I think, so um, just as a key defender. Um, so, But I think they'll be a bit like West Coast where it's, okay, we probably do need to bridge the gap between um, our veterans and our young guys. So um, it really just depends if they can, if they try and sneak their way into trying to maybe get another key forward because Charles just left and I think Callum Coleman-Jones is basically... Signed with North, but Mm. not officially. So I can really see them maybe going after another key forward, like a Jake Riccardi at GWS. But other than that, I think they're just going to go into the draft. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I think they should go into the draft, and they probably will. But I just sort of had a quick... So what's their future, next year's draft? Do they have a decent draft hand next year as well? Uh, I don't think so, because I think you, you couldn't have traded for future picks until now. So that qu- they must be just so the standard. Just a normal year, okay. Yeah. So I was going to sort of say they could maybe, because you were alluding Essendon one and again in that second round, they could flip one of those 26-28 mm. type of picks and try and extract a bit of blood out of Essendon for their draft hand next year. That could be something worth looking at as well. For sure. One but thing- they definitely should take picks with the majority of those picks they currently have I think one thing I've heard is that they're looking to trade up this draft so they might package you know some of those second rounders with a team that needs um, more points yeah more points so like your Bulldogs um, and uh, Collingwood in particular yeah so there could be some creative deals there apparently they went after Adelaide's pick four uh, and got knocked back so, uh, or was it GWS? I'm, it was, I think it was Adelaide that got yeah, knocked back, yeah. but I could see them doing a little deal there yeah. with the team, with the, one of those clubs that you know want to trade down and get seven and fifteen yeah. for pick three or whatever. Um, so that's an interesting one to watch. It'd be huge if they get someone like a Finn Callahan in the draft, yeah. wouldn't it? So we got a final trade-related question from RJ Dra- uh, Dragon, uh, who asks, "What is Isaac Rankin's value if he has another poor year like this one? Um, he had 11 games. Sorry, he played 18 games, averaging 11 possessions and a goal, and obviously didn't really showcase the form yeah. that he showed early in his season. That's an interesting one. What do you think Rankin would be worth? A former pick three, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, out uh, of contract next year. As out well. of contract, second round at least, because mm. um, he's had the times. So you also just don't know if the hubs sort of stuff those guys around a bit." Mm. And, I think Rankin's a bit like what we were saying before. It's, he probably just needs that confidence in his game just to really dominate. Like I remember watching him play in an under-18s all-star game where he played for one team, basically got them to a five-goal head start and because one team was just dominating the other, so they put him and a couple of other guys on the other team and he basically got the other team back to him. In. Wow. So he basically <laughs> just... like and. At that time, you usually got a medal for one team and a medal for another and everyone just kind of went, 
No, it's, yeah. it's just him. Just give him, <laughs> give him all of the medals. Give him two medals. Yeah. yeah, all of the medals. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I, I think Rankin's the sort of kid who needs to be playing in a half decent team to really show his talent yeah. because he's obviously a small forward. A small forward. Yeah, exactly. You got to get in on the end of other people's work to some extent, yeah. and he's really, really good at that. So you can imagine at Gold Coast, it's yeah. less opportunities to do that. If you if he played for a Melbourne, yeah. can you imagine like. Oh, he'd be the same as Cozzy. Exactly. Uh, I agree with that. That being said... He could play on a wing. If he got his tank true. up, he could play on a wing. True. Yeah, that's right. Um, that being said, I agree. I think a second rounder, if if in this hypothetical he has another year like this, yeah. I think a pick 25 would get it done. He yeah. is a pick two. Yeah. Uh, so you've got to respect his talent a little bit. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's a little bit of a double standard because I sort of said the opposite for yeah. Petrovsky Seaton. Well, he is only into his third. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, eighteen games versus ninety-five. That's right. The, the ninety-five games is really what's the factor for me with Petrovsky Seaton. But yeah, I think I think he would go pick twenty-five or something to the power, or more likely the Crows, I reckon. But yeah, um, yeah that's an interesting question. Let's talk about the draft because this is uh, your really your domain, Lenny. Yep. Um, first of all, I guess because we are WA based, we obviously and you included obviously have a better understanding of the WA kids. How do you rate this upcoming draft in terms of WA kids? Because it seems like it's fairly strong. Yeah, no, I think. Well, I think this would be a team that could go close to giving the championships a good shake. Mm. It's probably hard because we haven't seen the Vic Country or the Vic Metro or the Alice Boys in essentially two years. So no. it's hard in that sense. But um, now, look, we've got some really good prospects. I think about 26 have been invited to the combine. Right. There'll probably be another 10, 15 that will get added to a state combine. So overall, they'll probably get about 40 kids or mature ages invited so i think from a wa perspective um local footy's in very good hands because mm. I mean, last year we saw it obviously the same situation victorian kids barely played now this is the second year of that unfortunately i wonder if it'll have that effect where a lot more wa kids get picked late and south australian yeah. kids late um i know that the eagles had three late picks last year and i think went wa wa south australia yeah i think i think that's what we did or maybe including the rookie draft it was all wa south yeah. australia did you guys take any Victorians last year? I don't think you did. No, nah, we're all WA. Like O'Driscoll yeah. and... Um, oh, no, we picked Chapman. up Tracy. Oh, yeah, Tracy. Tracy rookie draft. Yeah, that's, that's rookie, true. Not so, rookie. yeah, okay. So a bit more of a speculative pick there. I, I do wonder if that's going to hurt a lot of these fringe Victorian kids. You know, I think I think we all know Nick Dacos is... Yeah. <laughs> like, they all know his talent. Well, if you're averaging 36 touches yeah. and two goals. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, probably unprecedented as well. Yeah, I because WA did beat South Australia twice, yeah. didn't they? That's yeah. a pretty good effort. I think the... From my understanding, the first game South Australia were close, yeah, and the second game I think WA just blew them off the park. Wasn't it? Wasn't it a thriller? I think the second one was the close one. One, of, there I was think it thr- might have been the other way around. There, eh? there was a thriller and there was a blowout. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, because um, I, I think Johnson went to tag um, Horn Francis, yeah, and apparently just completely batted yeah. him out of the game, <laughs> which is a bit of a shame, don't you reckon? Like yeah. when you've got these eighteen-year-old kids, this is their showcase of their yeah. talent. And one team's strategy is to completely nullify this yeah. kid. I don't think it's going to hurt Horn Francis, but no. um, yeah. But in terms of like the strength against previous years, yeah. how, how strong do you think this one is? Um, from a WA perspective, mm. or from an okay, yeah, from a WA, WA perspective, oh look, I think it'll be strong. I think there's also some mature ages which will help the WA hand a bit more than the other mm. states. Well, yeah. apart from South Australia, I don't think any of the other state leagues got up. I don't think mm. so. Yeah. So um. Yeah, I think it'll be a strong one. It's just, it's probably a hard one to judge because you've probably had some kids that have played footy. You've had some kids that just can't get a yeah. game. Two years, you don't know how that's impacted development. Mm, for sure. Who do you think is the best WA talent? Because I think it's not super clear. I think there's a bit of a split consensus. Some people think Erasmus. Some yeah. people think it's Johnson. I think Van Royen's really yeah, up there. going up there in terms of Jai yeah. Miss around that range as well. Yeah. Do you have an opinion on that? I think purely because it's harder to find a good key forward than it is a midfielder. Mm. I think Jai miss, but in turn, Erasmus is good, Johnson's good, Van mm. Royen's shown that he can be a very good swingman. Um, Jack Williams is a good key forward as well. Are you three man Yep. 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 So I think it's like what we were saying before, it's probably after the first five, five or six picks, it's very even after that. Mm. Um, Hence why Richmond are probably trying to trade up from seven into that top five because yeah. you've got the Callahans and that. Yeah. Uh, Mac Andrew might even be around that yeah. range. Uh, yeah, you can see it's reflected in people trying to make trades up. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I guess uh, in terms of the whole draft, you kind of alluded to it already, but yeah. uh, in terms of depth, you think it's a little bit shallower than previous years? Yeah, but I, I also think that's not the kids' fault. I think it's just the unfortunate. Yeah. So, like, we've got some boys that haven't played in two years. Mm. And they, but if they played in two years, they might have gone from, say, maybe a pick 50 up into the 30s. So, And the smaller factor people seem to be forgetting as well is when guys go up to play state champs, guys yeah. step up into like the Waffle Colts yeah. and stuff like that and then make a name for themselves in those games like that might not have been yeah. getting as scouted. But Tams go, oh, this guy might have something. Let's have a bit more of a True. look at him. Well, the perfect example of that is Chetty Warner. No one mm. knew about him at the start of his draft year. He then played some... Good games for Fremantle. He got looked at for state. Had some really, really good state games, and then end up going. And I think Sydney's pretty happy with his development. Say, pretty happy rising star nomination. Yeah. Um, pretty early in the season as well. Ended up overtaking Golden. I'd say probably in product productivity for mm. the year in the end. His little brother's in the draft, isn't he? Yeah. Do you know yeah. much about him? Yeah. So he's probably a bit different to Chad. So Chad was more like your little bull terrier, like hunting contests. Sarongi Did, type. Yeah, didn't really care if you were in the way he was just going to win the ball, whereas mm. Corey's probably more your silky outside will hit you on the tip mm. if you're a um, big key forward. So yeah, yeah, okay, that's interesting insight. It is crazy when you think about the fact that Dacos is almost, not universally, but I'd say the majority of people think he's the best player in this draft. Horn Francis is the other contender. Yeah. And some are saying he's the great greatest number one pick, potentially, and he's barely... Well, I mean, he's not barely played, but he's obviously missed a lot of footy due yeah. to COVID and stuff like that. It's pretty crazy. Jensen GS asks, where does Dacos rank in terms of previous draft, draft prospects, in your opinion, Lenny? Uh, it's hard. Cause it like, is you, hard. Look, you look <laughs> at his start of the year, and he, like I said before, he averaged 36 touches and two goals a game in the mm. first five games. One reason why I probably have Horn Francis just above him is just because I've seen what he's done at senior level. And I really, and I do like I like it when I can see an eighteen year old kid that can match it with the big boys and not just match any gets, you know, twelve, thirteen touches and you're like, Oh, you know, good job. It's like in the prelim he had twenty five touches and three goals, which is the same as Marcus Bond and Pelly in the grand final and everyone's <laughs> talking about that performance. But um and I also don't really like doing comparisons because you can throw kids under a bus in a way, because if you say he's the he'll be the a great number one pick like Luke Hodge suddenly that's mm. a very very high ceiling he's got to True. just match yeah. and then he's got to go further than that so mm. look I think he's a very exciting prospect um, he's obviously going to go to Collingwood um, yeah and just hopefully Collingwood's development coaches will uh, develop him into an even better senior player and hopefully they can afford him once he builds his salary up <laughs> True. Yeah, all the uh, salary dumping has been preemptively preparing for Nick Dacos. <laughs> um, Aaron asks, where do you think Dacos will get bid on? Yeah. Uh, and will Collingwood go into a deficit? Um, some people, I think, yeah, half the people think Dacos is the clear number one and will go get bidded on. Um, and then some other people think might maybe pick two is more realistic. Um, yeah. Do you... Do you have a prediction? It really just depends if North Melbourne want to screw <laughs> Collingwood yeah. around. Because like, North could just go, oh, bugger it, we'll just take Jason Orn. And mm. then maybe this um, second pick... Um, I've actually got a mental block who it is. Um, uh, sorry, it's North Melbourne and then it's GWS hold Collingwood's pick. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So then it'll be GWS. Um, well, I think... then you just don't know if GWS are going to bid on him. Mm. So it really just depends on which clubs... You could even see them bidding on Sam Darcy. Yeah, which One is tall. Yeah, who's yeah. probably the clear key position player in the draft, the son of Luke yep. at the Bulldogs. Um, so it really just depends on where clubs rank them because I can see Dacos being bid at one, but I can also see North just going, no, nah, we want Jason mm. Horn. Yeah, Let's do it. we want him to get that $10,000 from NAB. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do remember seeing like a silent survey, or not on a survey, rather like six years ago. Uh, and they asked half or 12 recruiters that year um, without attaching the names or the clubs who their opinion was for pick one. I think it was the McCluggage, Taranto oh, um, yeah. and uh, McGrath draft. Yeah. Yeah. And so many of them had different answers. Yeah. So it does stand to reason that we could have another case where half the clubs rate Horn Francis more, half the clubs rate Dacos yeah. more. So that's why it's hard to predict. I have heard it reported that they think it might be pick three he gets better on. Yeah. Which I think would be a bit of a shock. Yeah. I did sort of half think last year um, Adelaide wouldn't bid on Ugle Hagen so that they could have their number one pick. You know, Phil yeah. is a local boy. He, he's earned this. Yeah, we'll, the we'll take portfolio. It. Yeah, and I guess the other flip side, I think I actually remember you saying this last year, 
is that you put a lot of pressure on a kid who goes pick one. So then yeah. maybe you take the pick two. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. give him pick two. So at the end of the day, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, I have got a little bit of information here and I'm just going to sort of read it for those wondering about the, the matching bid and whether they'll go into deficit. Um, yeah, so in this article, that's where it suggests it's likely to happen in the first few picks of the draft. And 36, 41, 43, and 48 is what Collingwood currently hold, which would not be enough to match that. Yeah. Um, their selections are worth 15, 94 points. And uh, some of those point, uh, picks have been pushed back because there's been free agency moves already. If a day cost bid it comes at pick one, yeah. the Magpies need to use 2,400 draft points. So they're 900 points off. or yes, yeah, 800 points under. At pick two, that's reduced to 2,014 points. And at pick three, it's 1,627. So... Even if a bid comes at pick three, yeah. they're still under yeah. in terms of that. They're still going to cop a, a deficit. I don't know if there's a rule on how much of a deficit you can cop. Mm. I don't think there is. No, because Freo went into deficit with Liam Henry yeah. a couple yeah. of years ago. So. I don't um, think it was a massive deficit, though. We only went no. down a pick or two the following year. That's right. Yeah. You'd, you'd imagine if Dacos goes at pick one, <laughs> that would really screw Collingwood over. Oh, yeah. So their next year's pick would probably almost slide to the second round depending on where they finish yeah. like that's a serious def- it probably won't be but yeah. um, you also just don't know if they'll um, do like a trade with Richmond to try and get some of those second rounders as well well that's what I'm going to suggest I think Collingwood will do that I don't think there's too too much um, of a question there the, it, it's awkward there with Lipinski because you've got yeah. two clubs dealing there who don't want to trade any picks they want to trade into this year's draft yeah. and neither of them have a lot of picks this year yeah. <laughs> so how do you how do you get a deal done for Lipinski that's going to be an interesting one to watch yeah. um, but long story short yeah I, I don't know where Dacos will get bid on I think Collingwood will have a plan in place so that yeah. they don't go into a massive deficit because yeah. they could win the spoon next year oh yeah it's conceivable that they win the spoon next year so pick one could become pick eight or something yeah. I don't know hypothetically yeah. and they, they don't want that to happen they've already given up pick two this year <laughs> yeah. um, cool Chris, friend of the channel, uh, has there's some Frio questions here. Yep. Uh, with Frio's, a uh, will Frio's strategy with picks six to eight be more likely best available, or do you think it'll be local? This is kind of a question for both of you, I guess. Um, yep. Yeah, Bush, would, do you have a preference on um, whether you'd go best available or? By or the local? looks, it looks like it'll work out nicely both ways for us. Either way, probably mm. the guys who will are best available at those picks are WA guys. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, think that makes the decision point. easy for us. Yeah, that's true. What about yourself, Lee? I think it's the same. Like once mm. it, again, as I said, it's probably a very even draft. So it's probably not like you'll be biased and just go, "We want this WA boy," even though a Victorian kid might be above. It's um, I think they'll, they'll look at someone like Erasmus as a mid forward just to replace Chera, and Erasmus is quite a big boy mm. already, so he could play senior footy from the get go. Um, I think they might also look at Joe Mist because yeah. I think they are a bit light on the key forward stocks yeah. at the moment. Like I think Tracy had to play every game or close to every yeah. game this year. Mm. And, and I think teams like to have blue chip like key forward stocks like yeah. for the high draft picks, not try and necessarily get them with rookie picks and stuff like that because yeah. a lot of them are those blue chip sort of guys. Yeah. JC Ford uh, has chimed in and said that uh, he was thinking Erasmus and Miss, the two players yeah. you just mentioned. Uh, he says he's not so sure and I don't blame him because it is pretty even around that as well. Is, is it fair to say, um, I don't know too much about these kids, but Amiss, is he more of a third tall or do you think he's a genuine key? Because that could see him and Van Royen like, yeah. fluctuate a little, I reckon. Yeah. He's about 195 centimetres, I think. Okay, so, so he's not undersized yeah, as he was playing. He was playing centre-half forward for his perf and mm. booted 51 goals in 15 games. So. Yeah. Very accurately, too, yeah, I so I think yeah. Ironically. I think, yeah, I, know. I think he only had like 12 misses for the year. So yeah. His last name is just not good for him. Um, yeah. Ironic. More like Jaya Goal. Yeah, so, I, I think it does need to change his name. Um, but look, I think I'd probably just say him because I think he's, apart from Sam Darcy, who no other club's going to get him, I think he's mm. probably the best key forward on the market. The same way Jason Horn's probably the best player on the market. Yeah, I think this is a year uh, from a less educated opinion, but... There seems to be a fairly good amount of talls. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Compared to yeah. years, like I remember years where there's like two talls in the top thirty, and you're just like, why? Where and are going key forwards? Exactly, exactly. And I, that's why um, I think we'll see someone like a Van Roy and Bolt. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he's had a good grand final performance, kicked yeah. four goals, had a good bottom age year last year as well. Right there you go. Um, can swing back, played yep. centre half back for um, WA in at least the first game. Might, might have been the second game. Keep the match winning goal when he swung yeah. forward. So. Yeah. 
I, I feel like there's going to be a bit of a premium on those guys, and that's going to really shake up things. Uh, the other thing I've heard is uh, Matt Rendell seems to think that Mac Andrew, the uh, yeah. the big Sudanese uh, ruckman, yeah. might go top five to GWS now. So yeah. that's a player who was previously rated a bit lower, yeah. but because of the pl- of the team in that range who need a ruck, yeah. they and might seem as a rare also talent. Also, quite an explosive player mm. as well. And, and I think and the success of Luke Jackson's probably helped that a little as well. Yeah, yeah potentially. Yep. Well, yep. ironically, Mac Andrew was in Melbourne's uh, NGA mm. program, but for those who don't know, clubs can't match the bid unless it's after pick 40 if they're a metropolitan kid. Yeah. So if your country is, say, from Derby like Liam Henry, then Fremantle can match the bid. But if Liam had just grown up in, yeah. I don't know, Cottesloe and then yeah, yeah. deal that, he, he wouldn't be able to be bid on. Interesting. Because that's what's happened to us with Motlop. We can't. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Just to make an Eagles reference as well, that's why I actually think, despite we ha- we haven't taken a ki- uh, midfielder in the first round for eight years now, yeah. we're crying out for midfield talent, and I reckon the Eagles will draft a key forward. And I think that's because of this talent. I don't know what next year's draft looks like. But it's probably also because apart from Oscar Allen, like Kennedy, as much as I love him, like he's probably one of my all-time favourite Eagle players. Yeah. But he's in his last year or next year. It might even... He hasn't signed on and hasn't yeah. just made up his so mind. So you've got Darling, who I think's just turned 30 as well. Mm. Yep. And then the other key forward that's probably at West Coast that I can think of that's young is Oscar Allen. Yeah, that's right. So I'm not... So it's sort of hard, like it's... Mm. 100%. Uh, Waterman's probably more of a third tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, Waterman's not the long-term solution there. And, you know, Brando, we spent a first-round pick on, didn't even play him as a key forward. Now we might lose Kennedy and Brando. Yeah. Great. Um, but anyway... Uh, Caleb Three Votes ask: Jason Horn is a uh, Horn Francis is a known Frio fan. That, to much people's surprise, <laughs> um, he suggests should they trade six, eight, and the future first to get him? No, no, I think that's a little bit steep, isn't it? What about six and eight? No, I wouldn't because mm. you're essentially giving up two mm. good WA good kids. good players for just one. Like yep. unless it was like he was averaging forty touches in league and was kicking up like five goals a game mm. it was clearly like going to be the most dominant player you would but I think it's it's just hard because you also just don't know if the go home factor especially yeah. with COVID you just don't know what's going to happen so yeah I, I think it could be an overrated factor the fact that he went for Fremantle because teams leave the boyhood clubs or like their childhood like fan the, uh, the yeah. team they were a fan of all the time so yeah. it's not as though Horn Francis is a guaranteed lock to stay just yeah. because he went for Frio, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, so you're against trading up from there. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. And I'd rather get two players than one. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. Eagle Nation, friend of the channel, shout out. They do great content on the West Coast Eagles. Um, it's a draft question. Uh, it's a WA face uh, based one. Joshua Brown or Corey Warner? Who goes higher in the draft? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, for those who don't know, Josh Brown won the Jack Clark Medal, which is the association best yep. and fairest for the Colts. So, I would say him. Um, the thing I always say is about if it's a kid who's got an older brother in AFL or a father who's mm. been a previous gun AFL player. The last name doesn't mean they're just going to be a good player. Mm. Like They've also got to create their own name. Um, and so I think that's sort of something that might get a bit lost with Corey. Like, he's a good player, but I don't think he's just a good player just because his brother's a gun player. Yeah. And I think because Brown just won the um, uh, Jack Clark, I think that puts him ahead. Interesting. Interesting. Greg Clark is a mature age Subiaco premiership player. Yep. Um, I do remember around, I think he was one of those kids in whatever draft was it? I think 15. 15, there you go. That people were surprised didn't get drafted. He was a huge inside, big bodied mid. I think in his draft he was more outside. Yeah. So he was a wingman and I think clubs were like, he's not really super quick. He's a reasonable kick, but like when you're that size and you'd want to, use your body a bit more but mm. I don't know if you guys saw the game yesterday he was I cr- didn't. <laughs> he was just crashing and bashing every contest mm. he could we have a question for, again from Eagle Nation will he be drafted I think so um, and I think the thing now is because we haven't seen a lot of those kids in the last mm. two years you've seen a guy play for the last five six years a good standard of waffle he's been in an elite club like I think they've won the last five out of eight flags wow something ridiculous mm. like that so he's been a part of a successful club dominated the big stage yesterday did well in the Sandover I think maybe Probably. Some, like four yeah. or something yeah um, so I, I can see him going and West Coast probably do need another mm. inside outside midfield if that makes sense so that's true I, 
off, I can see him going to Eagles. Mm, that would be interesting. I don't know too much about him other than, you know, watching footage of him when he was in his under-18s yeah. year. Um, but obviously, yeah, it, there's a lot of players in the Waffle who seem to dominate and don't get picked up. It'd like, be interesting to see if they like think Clark. Like Bolton, Schloeve. Yeah, Schloeth, yeah. Bailey Rogers, who just won the Sandover. Yeah, yeah, Bailey Rogers. It, it, it is 24, I think. Yeah. I wonder if he's going to get picked up. Do, I hope okay. so. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think if you're 24, you've just won a Sandover. Yeah. yeah. Surely yeah. be looked at. You'd hope so. Yeah. Um, next question is from Bailey. Who should the dogs target given our forwards and mids are just about spot on? Uh, yeah, so unpacking that a little bit, um, the midfield in particular, the dogs is really strong. Yeah. Um, and they're probably the most depth. Yeah. That's the correct way of saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely depth. the deepest. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, forward line is pretty sound. It was probably a question mark going into this year. Uh, yeah, like this year. Josh Bruce came and answered a few questions there. Aaron Norton's a bit of a jet, and their smalls are pretty good too with yeah. uh, Unothing Waitman. Uh, I guess the ruck is probably one area they haven't answered yet. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think because English Tim English doesn't. I think he needs to compete harder mm. for them when he's in the ruck. Um, but likewise, they've got a guy Jordan Sweet who apparently is going to West Coast, even though Maybe. they need ruck. <laughs> I know. Well, it, they've. Uh, it's just that we've sounded him out. I, oh, they, okay. they think he's more likely to stay. Oh, okay. um, but that would be a strange result for yeah. them, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, I think another key back, maybe, do you yeah. think? At least a young prospect. I mean, do you think Sam Darcy's more a forward? Yeah, he's, okay. he's more your key I, forward that can ruck. I but think it, Norton goes back once Jamar mm. and Sam Darcy are established as forwards. You can put Norton back as a yeah. defender, which he was gumming into the league. The only problem, though, is you look at what he's doing in mm-hmm. that forward line. Like There are even moments in the prelim, in the finals, that you just looked at and went, Wow. He can yeah. still take those grabs from the back line, though, and yeah. then you're not dealing with his shonky goal kicking. Yeah. It is a tough one. I, I agree with what you're saying in that when you have a guy who can play really well forward, it's easy. It's harder to replace those guys. Yeah. But then the other side of it is, what if you have a Noogle Hagen, um, a Norton, and a Sam Darcy all competing in the same forward line? and yeah. like You kind of want to spread out your talent a little bit more. Yeah. I, I think... Maybe those guys could all work together. I think Oogle Hagen is a bit more versatile, can work around yeah. those players a little bit. But um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe like a Tom Clury or something like that from, yeah. from Port. I don't know. He hasn't yeah. been linked to them at all. But I'm just thinking ways to sort of, Like Alex Keith was sort of like a. Um, he's traded in last year to sort of help that back line. He played very well. But again, he's yeah. not even young. He's like 29, I think. So. Wasn't even his first sport. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> they could even look at someone like Peter Laddams. Yeah. That's true. I forgot to mention that. Yes, good point. Yeah. He's uh, currently without a home yet. Um, he could stay at Port, but yeah. I, I agree. Between Geelong and the Dogs, uh, that, that makes sense. Ben Herbie has asked, do you have a nomination for a, perhaps a surprise top 10 draftee? It's, it's hard, isn't it? Because yeah. we don't even know what the top 20 is going to be like. But is there maybe someone in, who you think is probably currently in the second or third round yeah. that you reckon could bolt or anything like that? I think... As you've touched on, I think Van Broyen's the big mm, one. Like mm. He probably was a bit down on confidence at the start. Well, he was dealing with glandular fever. Oh, really? Um, still playing, which is remarkable, but he's really just shot up mm. since. Um, I think Matthew Johnson can push for top 10, top yeah. 15. Um, he's, he's another one that's performed strongly for WA. Yeah, so... Um, but it's just hard because, you, again, you don't really know what most of these Victorian yeah. kids have done. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I Obviously, coming from a less educated standpoint than yourself, but I've just got this feeling about Van Royne. I think he could even go to Fremantle. That's how much I think he can bolt. So, um, yeah, that would be interesting. Sweet. So, before we wrap up the potty, guys, we'll rattle through the last few questions around some team-based questions. we got Jaden, who's uh, asking what should the Melbourne Demons do with their picks? Just, I guess, a general off-season strategy for Melbourne, um, not necessarily in the draft, but like... You know, what can they do with these? They don't have a first rounder this year. They've got 33, 42, 54, and 91. Yeah. Pretty hard to, to wiggle those into yeah. anything. And, I, and let's be honest, if you've just won the flag by a big margin, not many clubs. Look, for Melbourne, they've really just got to try and keep the list together and mm. draft the best talent. I mean, their midfield is up there. Um, I don't know where they rank all time, like, because... There's always been that comparison between them and the West Coast mm. midfield. And before they won a flag, I kept saying, they have to win a flag. Yeah, yeah. And now they've done it. Now people are asking me. So yeah. I'm just going to ask you as an Eagles fan. Oh, good question. Where, where do you think they rank? Like Gorm, Petrarca, Viney, Oliver to Cox, Judd, Kirk, Cousins? It's a really good question. I think Cox is probably the more accomplished Ruckman. Yep. 
maybe speaking biasly there. But I think he probably did it a little bit longer. Gorn had some off years. Yeah. Uh, but at peak of his powers, Gorn's very good too. And Gorn would probably smash him in the taps, but Cox would be... Better, better around the ground. Yeah, certainly. And Gorn's not done yet either. Yeah, that's that's very true. Yeah, so it's it's a tight one there. Um, I, I'd probably still edge Judd and Cuz over Oliver and Petrarca just because they just did it a bit longer. Yeah. But Petrarca and Oliver are incredible and yeah. so young, like yeah. 24 and yeah. 5 respectively, maybe even yeah. a bit younger than that. No, I think it's 24 and 25. So they're scratching the surface of what yeah. they're capable of. So it remains to be seen. I, I think yeah. just... I, I think Kerr comfortably shades Viney. I think yeah. I've always thought Kerr was an underrated player. I think well, he was... if you're finishing runner-up in a brown low twice. Yeah. yeah, he's almost an afterthought. When people talk about the Eagles midfield, I was like, oh, Daniel Kerr. But I don't think people realise how no, good Daniel Kerr. Like, I think he was like Sam Mitchell good, yeah. but a bit ruined by injury. So, yeah, I, I would not give it to the Eagles slightly, but I've been full of praise of Melbourne. Yeah. They were an incredible team to watch, and yeah. uh, it's just beginning for them. Yeah. So Pains me to say it, but I'd give it to the Eagles even more convincingly than you just did. Yeah. yeah. It's it's more like I'm really conscious of what could happen with these boys. Yeah. yeah. There's like, the upside's there for them, but like, there's no way near it. Yeah, like, Petrarca's only really been superstarish for like a year or two at this point. Yeah. Before that, he was sort of a half-forward flanker trying to yeah. figure it out. Mm. It's... Like, because if they suddenly start going into a powerhouse mode, it's almost like, do you compare them to the Richmond team? Yeah. Or do you compare them? yeah. I think as well, that I, I think Judd is unparalleled in that group. Oh, right. if he, I think none of them are as good as Judd, yeah. No. Even well, Judd and Cuz are both really good by the time they're, like, straight in the league. Like, mm. it took well, Petrarca a few years, as I mentioned. Judd won a banner mm. in his second 23rd, third, 21, wasn't he? Yeah, he yeah. was yeah. 21. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the, actually, the more I think about it, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable with the Eagles still. Yeah. But, again, it's still, these guys are young, so... Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess a long-winded way to answer the question is with the, with the Ds, probably just hit the draft. Um, if you can find some cheap players to sort of fulfill holes over the next couple of years, that's great. But I think they're going to have to seriously consider what's going to happen with all these stars come out of contract. And yeah. I don't think they need to overpopulate their list yeah. now. Um, they've got some good youth. Half yeah. of them are already premiership <laughs> players. Uh, but I think it's just, you know, I don't know when their contract runs up for a Petrarca or Oliver, yeah. but we're, we're talking they're going to be million-dollar players. So... Um, Smithy asks, oh, who should the Hawks target in the trade and draft period? Their picks are 5, 21, 24, and, and then 56. So three top 24 picks and pick five. Yep. Do we kind of agree youth? Yeah. Do you think? Yep. yep, you agree with that as well? Yep. Um, what kind of types do you reckon they would look at? I think they need outside runners. Like you've got O'Meara, who's a good inside mid. You've got Mitchell, who's good inside. Um, wing guards saw your half forward flanker that can go through Warpool, um, I guess yeah they might look yep. to a young Ruckman as well yep yep because they traded out Pitney didn't they yeah. Um, so yeah I agree that's probably one they'd look at Mac Andrews probably one to consider if GWS haven't taken him I think yeah. he'd probably arguably be best available certainly yeah. the best Ruck in the yeah uh, is Darcy Ruck much uh, he can, um, but he's probably more at this stage. You'd say he's more of a Keep forward. forward yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's why I said Mac Andrew was the best. Um, yeah. the, I've seen a little rumor of Rory Lobb to Hawthorne. Rory Lobb's a funny one where the, he's another one where no one's really reporting it, but every now and then you yeah. see an article. I heard he the out. urban rumor, like the whispers that you hear in the street, that he re- does not want to be in Perth and he'd sooner retire. That was the rumor I'd heard. What is it with these players nominating trades to come to a city? Not necessarily. That's his missus driven, apparently. That's that's what with rumor, boys in the AFL, if that's yeah, true. That's what the rumour is, because she's just gotten a job over East, apparently, and he wants to follow her. Right. I don't think you'd really miss him too much, eh? Good, good player. But yeah, I'd like the return. I reckon we could get a half-decent return for him, and we probably wouldn't get anything better for him than what we could get for him right now. The iffy part with him is he's on 700k a year and, worth, and not mm. worth that. So if there's a situation where you're paying some of his salary... Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Or, 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 sorry, if, if there's a situation where a team's taking on the 700k, it might actually be cheap. I'd cheap. be more interested in doing, like, a deal where it's, like, Tim English for Lob, something like that, because isn't English getting paid more than the Bulldogs would probably like to be paying? Or probably. do you give him back to GWS for Cornelia? Yeah, I could, that would be such a bizarre situation. Yeah. <laughs> All these players requesting trades back to their home. Oh, I don't think Cornelia has, but everyone just keeps no, going. No, sorry, I was Google thinking go. lob back to GWS when Neil might be coming back yeah. to Fremantle. Like, yeah. the irony of you guys trading in Hogan and Lob for basically Lockie Neil, like, in that yeah. trade period. Lockie Neil in 12 months' time might be at Fremantle, and Hogan and Lob might be playing over East. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> That's bizarre. Um, yeah, so uh, any other points on Hawthorne? I, I think the key f- forwards... I think they probably use one. I think yeah. I think it'd be like Kaczynski and um, Mitch Lewis. I think they're happy with, yeah. and that's fine. It's not it's not a gaping need. But um, if if, if they could, they'd look for someone established. I think. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, the pattern thing didn't yeah. quite work out. Um, 
yeah, that's true. Um, but even still, like if there is a decent key in the second round, like a Van Royen, yeah. um, could be a good get for them if well, they're also yeah. getting other players. But still, you might even get like a Jack Williams a bit later. Like yeah. a, even Josh Cripps isn't a bad mm. forward prospect, a bit raw, but he's got potential. Yeah. Is he Pat's brother? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have do you know much about him? Um, big key forward. He's had some good games, but like I was saying Rock's before, a little, I think, too. Yeah, he can rock, yeah. but like I was saying before, just because his brother's an out mm. and out superstar of the competition. No, no, he was a bit down this year, but mm. he's still a superstar in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Um, don't put all that expectation on Josh. Mm. Like, let Josh be his own man. Let him have his own path. Um, Did you hear that, Dylan Haywood? I know you've been pining for Josh Cripps for a while. <laughs> oh, fire up, big fella. <laughs> is he, do you think you'd definitely get drafted? Or is I, it I think with his body of work this year and... Again, good key forwards and good ruckmen just don't grow on trees, yeah. so I think. Um, I think you're more, more yeah. than likely. Yeah, fair enough. We'll end the podcast with uh, a question from Aiden, and this is a spicy hypothetical. Should the Pies and Dogs trade Cox for Lipinski? I think the Dogs would laugh at that, to be honest. Yeah, well, it's not like <laughs> Cox is an out-and-out out out ruckman. He's more of a forger. Yeah, so, true. I mean, if he was a ruckman and Bulldogs desperately needed someone... I think they might be looking for a guy who can play forward as well. Yeah. If if they're thinking Stefan Martin might be available next year. Yeah. But I think Lipinski is more valuable. Yeah. To be honest, a better talent. Well, he's um, 22? 23, yeah, probably around like that range. That. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think I think Cox will get done in a sec, uh, separate deal to Lipinski. Yeah. Uh, he might end up at the Brisbane Lions or something like that, if at all, if yeah, if yeah. anywhere at all. So, cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Lenny. Um, it's been great to have you on the channel. You're very, very popular guest with uh, the subscribers, which is which is awesome. It's always a pleasure to be back here. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, thank you, Busher, for your hospitality Absolutely. again. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'll probably put in a little disclaimer as well. Um, we had some issues with our podcast host, guys. So if you prefer to listen to the podcast ver- rather than watch it, there's a new po- like you have to search True Footy again to find a new one to subscribe to it. I had to change hosts. Um, you'll find it because it's got only the most two recent podcasts we've done. So just keep an eye out for that, guys. I think we're on Spotify and iTunes and all that stuff. So Pop um, the link around. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So, um, yeah, just a heads up there, guys. Um, it has moved. Uh, so good times. Anyway, thanks again, Lenny. And, uh, yeah, we'll see everyone soon. Bye. Hey.